everybody. Um, welcome to this session on empowerment through inquiry. I am Emma Andrew. I am joined in this very short introduction by Jenny Ewan, Fleur Hool and Katie Montgomery. Um, we are all teachers in East Lothian and our aim in this session was to bring a group of teachers together to talk about our experiences of inquiry and how they might have led to something which we might call empowerment, um, which can be a very hard thing to pin down. When we initially got together to think about this session, we all agreed that there were three questions in the book, Teacher Agency and Ecological Approach, by Mark Priestley, Gert Biester and Sarah Robinson, which really gave us an excellent structure to frame our discussions and to start to build this session. Plus we added one question of our own. And those questions were, number one, what is empowerment or teacher agency and why is it desirable? Number two, how has your experience of inquiry empowered you? That was our question. Number three, it was in the book, where does empowerment or teacher agency come from and how is it shaped? And number four, what has empowerment, teacher agency, made possible for you? Uh, we then asked a number of teachers from um, across Scotland to express their thinking around these questions. Six teachers agreed to participate and they're uh, with us here today as well. Um, so we're here to give our own personal responses to one or more of these questions. And in this session, following the very short introduction, we will watch six three minute videos back to back from those six teachers answering one or two of those questions. Uh, then we are delighted that Mark Priestley is able to join us. And after the videos, he will give just a, a short comment on his reflections on what the teachers have said, but also bringing in his wider knowledge of conversations with other teachers about uh, teacher agency. And then we want to have ideally a good sort of meaty 15 minutes at the end of discussion uh, where you are free to put your questions in the chat. So please do that, questions, comments in the chat. Please remember to keep uh, mics uh, muted and cameras off and we will have people to, to field the questions so that we can have more of a discussion around it. I will now pass over to Jenny. I'm Jenny Ewan. I'm a maths teacher at Preston Lodge High School in East Lothian as well. And Emma, Fleur, myself and Katie have all got together mainly through our various involvements in the Education Scotland Teacher Leadership Programme. We've all been involved in that in various ways over a number of years. And the programme itself is a structured programme um, which lasts a whole academic year and allows staff to um, explore the structure of practitioner inquiry in a series of different ways and to carry out an inquiry into practice in their own classroom, giving them the experience of, of doing that in their own situation and finding out the, how that experience can be helpful. And our involvement in that has led us to get to know each other much better and involved us in the setting up of a, a network of, of staff across the country to support each other in carrying out our own inquiries. And I am going to pass over to Fleur. Hello everybody, I'm Fleur, I'm a teacher in East Lillian 2. Empowerment to me means feeling valued and trusted as a professional that's striving to be and do their best for themselves and their learners and their community and it's as simple as that. My journey into inquiry started before the TLP programme because inquiry comes from curiosity and striving to make improvements. And I think we all try and do that. So it doesn't need to be set in a programme and course, although the TLP was very helpful in developing my thinking about the processes of inquiry. Inquiry has very much empowered me as a professional, giving me structure, a better handle on evidence, and through this, the confidence to shush my imposter syndrome and build my professional voice, hence I'm here. And for me, inquiry and empowerment works best in a community, which is why the Teacher for Inquiry Network is very important to me. It's a bit like Weight Watchers. I do better when I'm surrounded by people on a similar journey so we can support and encourage each other. And now I'm going to pass over to Katie. 
Hello, I'm, I'm Katie Montgomery. I'm a math teacher in East Lothian Council also. Um, so linking to what Fleur has shared, inquiry started out as, and will always be for me, a collaborative process. Uh, my first experience of inquiry was a collaborative one, working with somebody in my school who was completing their masters. And I've sought out like that buzz of being with a group ever since then. Um, so that initial experience really opened my eyes to how inquiry, like as a way of being, can help us to be our best teacher, the best teacher version of ourselves that we can possibly be for our learners. But then in, like empowerment through inquiry for me came from that collaboration aspect. So having those challenging, inspiring conversations, the dialogue and the discussions that really make you feel like part of something bigger, which is, yes, absolutely why I wanted to become part of our network. So when it came to this session, it seemed absolutely right that all of our amazing speakers who are going to share their thoughts with you and ourselves have completed the teacher leadership programme, as Jenny was describing earlier. And then, you know, they've become part of this bigger network of inquirers that's out there. So now it's time for you to meet our six wonderful teachers who will introduce themselves on their video and share their fascinating perspectives, their thoughts and their experiences about inquiry and empowerment. So <laughs> For me, empowerment in education takes many forms, one of which being that it spread a greater culture of collaboration and collegiality. We've placed great emphasis for a number of years on the children learning cooperatively and the skills they can develop from this. We haven't always managed to replicate that in our own profession. We must take a collective responsibility towards improving the educational service we offer. What better way can we do that than by sharing good practice? Teacher leadership is also important to having empowerment. We are all seen as leaders in our own classroom who can shape change that is necessary for our own children. Relationships have always been at the core of education, but the empowerment to take the time to build stronger relationships with our pupils, with their parents, with our colleagues, as well as with outside agencies, has really allowed us to cater for the needs of the whole child, not just their educational development. Teacher voice has also become so important over the last few years. Initially, much of educational change seemed to take place from the top down. We were handed directives that we had to carry out. Now we have the ability to say what is working in our classroom and what changes we want to make. We are involved in shaping educational change from the ground up. And that is something that I find very exciting. Something I personally feel empowered in the career long professional learning that I now undertake. This is really where teacher agency comes to the fore. We now have the ability to say what our class needs and meet those needs, whether that be by doing personal design, setting up inquiries, going to courses, visiting other practitioners or other establishments to see good practice, we can make the necessary changes that will improve the service we are offering our children. And allows us to develop our understanding, grow in confidence, and gives us the opportunities to strengthen current skill sets. It is allowing us the time and the space to engage with the things that really matter to us. These are all things that I feel stand out as empowerment in education. Thanks for listening.
and um, it was my second year post probation uh, as far as my career goes and I found I wonder, just to come in at this stage, if it could then go on to another video and if there are big problems with it, uh, I know it's a little bit on the spot, but possibly I could ask um, all the teachers who are present to try and give a little talk about the main points that they raised in it. I know that's, um, it actually, I wonder if it would be useful, Kirsten, if I just ask if Sil Sylvia could then speak just now if she's able to Sylvia how do you feel about that I know that this is um unexpected it is unexpected um I did have it all written down so I could find it in a couple of minutes couple of, let me just find it and then I could um could I suggest we watch video three I know that's yeah. not in the order and then that gives Sylvia a little bit of time to get herself ready Hi everyone, my name is Louise Balsinger and I'm a biology and psychology teacher at Commonwealth High School. So the question I've been asked to discuss with you today is how the process of inquiry has empowered me. So to give you a wee bit of background first, I am a mother with two very young children. So I'm sure some of you will relate to this, this sort of in and out of school for several years across maternity leaves and pregnancies and back for a short while and then off again with the other one. So in terms of me as a priority, pretty low down the list. Um, so when I did come back after my son, I was back teaching biology and it became pretty clear pretty quickly that I'd totally lost my mojo. Um, just going through the motions. I've been teaching for 14 years, so you know I've, I've taught biology for many years. Um, and kind of my passion had gone. So it was quite a stroke of luck when someone in the department left who had been teaching psychology. And they asked if I would take it on. Um, I had a lot of psychology and neuroscience in my degree, so that's the obvious choice. And I meant I was already dual qualified because I had a um, credit, so I said yes. And it was probably just the challenge that I needed because it was a very, very, very steep learning curve. Uh, biology and psychology could not be more different in terms of the way they're taught, the way they're assessed. So it was just the challenge I needed. Now, historically, our results for psychology in the department weren't great. I'm sad to say the first year I taught them, they weren't particularly great either. So the perfection in me, perfectionist in me was like, okay, so what are we going to do about this? Okay, so I like to feel I get good results. I like to feel I'm doing my best for the kids. So it kind of reignited all this passion in me to make sure I was doing the best I could do. So this is where this inquiry process come in. The whole point of the teacher leadership program is you um, identify something you want to improve or something you want to work on. Uh, you come up with a plan of how to try and do that. You carry it out and then you assess its effectiveness. So that's essentially what I did with uh, my psychology class and had great results and that whole process and that way of teaching to try and 
you know, instill these skills is now my way of teaching going forward. And I've, it's, it's grown arms and legs and I'm constantly developing it. So in terms of the question, what has this process of inquiry done for me? Um, first of all, it sort of made me realize that if you're seeking a challenge, you can find that from within, okay? You can, there's always different avenues of your classroom that you can explore to sort of reignite your passion and uh, bring things to life and just try different things with your classes. Um, secondly, in terms of my confidence, I'm definitely uh, much more confident in myself and my skills and would say I'm a good teacher now, um, to the point where if I ever find the time in my life to go for a promotion and it was the right thing for me to do, I would go for it now. And um, that seed of doubt that would have crept in before of, oh, am I good enough? Do I have anything to offer? That's been put out by this process. So all in all, really good thing to get involved in. I would actively encourage you to do so. So hopefully you find this helpful. Um, I've gone slightly over my three minutes, so I will say goodbye. Thank you. And yes, Sylvia that, Sylvia, that would be brilliant if you could go next. Thank you. OK, thank you. Um, I don't have the slides, but you saw one of them. I'll introduce myself first. I'm um, a secondary language teacher in Perth and Kinross, and I took part in the teacher leadership programme last year, which was my second year post, -pro -post probation. Um, my area of focus was retrieval practice. And um, the two questions I was going to focus on was uh, what is empowerment or teacher agency and why is it desirable, um, which obviously is closely linked, closely linked to where does empowerment come from and how is it shaped? Um, firstly, what is empowerment? Um, in a teaching situation, I think it means taking charge of your learning environment. Um, and by that, I mean, it, I include both myself as a learner and as a professional and of my progress, um, but also of my classroom and the learning environment that I'm creating. It's about realizing that we're not just in co not just cogs in a wheel. As important, my slide showed a wheel where um, we have, you know, the school, the, the parents, the teachers, um, and there was one other on the slide. We're all as important as each other, oh, the, the, the pupils, obviously, the parents, the teachers and the pupils. Um, it's all about the teachers the pupils and we can't have one without the other but we're not just the teachers you know often I think we say oh I'm just a teacher or whatever and um, we're agents of our own change and agents within our situation um, and for me it's it empowerment has come from experiencing change and affecting change um, from allowing myself the space and time to learn um, in manageable trunk chunks about an area that I was interested in and then acting on what I'd learned. Um, and this came from giving and receiving feedback, um, both from the teacher to the pupils, you know, by explaining what I'm doing in my inquiry and giving them feedback about how they're doing in response to, to, to what's going on. And also from my critical friend on the teacher leadership program, um, explaining what I was doing and then getting feedback from them, somebody who's more experienced, who's not invested in my inquiry, but rather focusing on how I'm doing and how my inquiry is going and giving me pointers. So that feedback was really important for me. Um, and then on my third slide, um, I can't remember what it was, but if it's done well, um, if the whole sort of feedback process um, is done well, then the people involved are shaped by that feedback. And this is desirable because it wants me to keep on going to continue with the process. Um, and as such, my confidence has increased and the circle continues. Knowing that you're an agent of change, learning about how we can make a change, implementing it, giving and receiving feedback, and in, which leads to an increased desire to improve and move forward. And then again, back to the top, um, we know that we're an agent of change. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you very much. Have we got um, video four, which can be played? Hello, my name is Susan Brownlee. I'm an English teacher in South Lanarkshire. I'm going to spend the next couple of minutes just talking about, from my experience of inquiry, how that's led to me feeling uh, like I'm a more empowered classroom practitioner. 
I undertook what was then the Scale Teacher Leadership Programme in 2017 to 2018. And it was the first time that I'd really looked at my classroom practice through the lens of inquiry. Uh, if I fast forward to the end of the programme, and even looking back, it was such a powerful process, that, that changing experience uh, around ownership of something and the, the sense of personal and professional satisfaction that I got from it. And I think that completing uh, the TLP was just the start of that empowerment journey for me uh, at a time where, as a profession, we were only really starting to have those conversations about uh, teacher agency and empowerment. So I've gone on to uh, complete a master's module in the subject area around my inquiry and I uh, co-lead a teacher's reading group within South Lanarkshire for secondary teachers. And a big part of that responsibility is mentoring other teachers, participants uh, through um, their own small scale inquiries. And I certainly wouldn't have had the confidence or the knowledge really uh, to do that if I hadn't been through uh, that process myself. And we're delighted in South Lanarkshire that that programme is accredited by the GTCS. So our participants, once they've been through the full programme, uh, which is, is research informed, um, they can apply for professional recognition in reading for pleasure pedagogy. Uh, there can, of course, be barriers to inquiry in the classroom. Um, I'm aware of the fact that I'm lucky I have a supportive PT and supportive um, head teacher. Uh, time or lack of time is always an issue and there's never enough time to be able to do all the things that you want to. Um, but certainly it's, it shouldn't put you off undertaking inquiry work because the sense of ownership uh, really motivates you in order to, to see it through. You develop this passion for, for this project and it belongs to you. Uh, you really care about what happens and somehow somehow you find the time. Um, it's, you're never going to manage to do it all, but it is a, a good place to start. And I think the secret is really keeping it small to begin with. So there's definitely been a shift for me that's not quite tangible, but if I link it back, I can see it's coming from that first experience of inquiry. Lovely. And if video five out of six is ready, we'll go on to that. Hi everyone, my name is Lizzie Hay and I am a maths teacher at Kirkcaldy High School in Fife. So the questions I am discussing today are, where does empowerment and teacher agency come from and how is it shaped? And what has empowerment and teacher agency made possible for me? So I feel very lucky that for me, empowerment and teacher agency has always been a part of my teaching career. It came from when I had started training at Edinburgh University. I was studying a brand new master's at the time called Transformative Learning and Teaching. One of the core elements of this program was professional inquiry and using that to be transformative in your teaching. So finding disorientating dilemmas that you didn't quite understand, something didn't quite work, discussing it and critically reflecting on it, making some change and measuring the impact. We were encouraged to use this inquiry and empowered to lead our own professional learning and career in line with the GTCS standards. At the beginning, when you've just started, this seemed quite difficult because I didn't necessarily know what I needed or where to, I needed to go. But the journey and that struggle was powerful as it really showed me the importance of professional inquiry in my career and showed me that I could lead my own professional learning and where I needed to go. So now in my second year post probation, this is still a big ele element for me. And this is why I decided to do the teacher leadership programme with Education Scotland last year. It gave me the opportunity to connect and network um, with like-minded people and also to continue my inquiry journey. My school are also very encouraging, allowing us to take opportunities to lead learning throughout the school but most importantly, to give us the agency to teach the learners in our classroom. So we're planning our own lessons. We're really teaching to the learners in our room. 
rather than just following some sort of prescribed plan. This is really important and what we are here to do. So that's why we need teacher agency to be able to teach the learners in, in our classroom. So for me, empowerment has started from university. It's continued into my school with the culture of learning. And teacher agency has really allowed me to teach the learners in my classroom, build relationships with them, and be able to meet their needs as best as possible. Thank you. And we will now be going into our sixth and final video just before the conversation. So again, we'll just wait a short while. If there is a difficulty with this one as well, Hazel, I know you're with us. I know this is a big putting on the spot, but would you be prepared just to come forward and, and do a Sylvia and just, if possible? Um, I can do I'll need to grab my notes. <laughs> that's absolutely fine. I know this is a bit on the spot. Technology has defeated us ever so slightly. Are you ready to go? Oh, no, she's off to get her notes. Uh, so just to say, um, Hazel will be the last one speaking. And then we'll go and hear from Mark Priestley and we'll open up discussion. So if you have got any questions that come up, any that are in your head just now, please put them into the chat because we'll look out for questions there as well um, and uh, discuss those here. Here's Hazel back with us. Thanks, Hazel. Off you go. OK, I will do my best here. Um, so the question I was going to answer was, what has empowerment or teacher agency made possible for you? And I spoke about it in three strands. So when I did the teacher leadership programme last year, I investigated reading comprehension skills. I was working in the upper stages of a primary school at the time, and it was a real area of need for the children. And initially, I was really sceptical. I didn't necessarily know what inquiry looked like or how that would um, happen in the classroom successfully. But way down the line, once I got into it, I realized the impact it was having on the children. They were seeing that I was trying something new, I was learning with them and their, their confidence and their attainment was growing by the minute. It was fantastic to see. So the first thing it made possible for me was just the, the idea that you can make changes in your classroom and you can learn with the children and it can have a positive effect. The second thing that the inquiry made possible for me was um, the leadership of one of our curriculum development groups. In the past, I've been involved in curriculum development groups and have shared what I thought was useful, you know, contributed as best I could. But having completed the teacher leadership programme and this inquiry project, I felt I had evidence and a basis to share my thoughts and my ideas. And that gave me the confidence to put a plan in place with other members of staff that is ongoing at the moment. We're nowhere near any sort of conclusion, but it will continue to evolve and continue to be a part of the school improvement plan and our development over time. And I feel I can do that now and um, work with others and share my experiences and listen to others' experiences of inquiry to build a positive approach for the school moving forward. And the final strand um, was to do with. Um, uh, promoted post for want of a better phrase uh, prior to doing an inquiry project prior to the teacher leadership program I would not have had the confidence to put myself forward for any sort of promoted post based on the fact I didn't feel I had enough breadth of experience um, but this process has allowed me to share learning with colleagues and to develop my classroom practice and when the opportunity for principal teacher came up, I was able to put myself in that position and eventually become successful in that post. And so that's really given me opportunities that I wasn't aware I was ready for. So it was a really positive, um, a positive result uh, and for the children and for myself and for the way I approach my teaching. So I hope that was a reasonable summary of what I would have said. <laughs> It was. Thanks very much, Hazel, very much. I, I do appreciate we've put a few people on the spot. So that was the six uh, 
diverse experiences from teachers in uh, different areas of Scotland speaking about empowerment, but how inquiry played a part in that. Um, could we maybe go straight to Mark Priestley just to give us some reflections just for the next couple of minutes on what you make of that and how it chimes or doesn't chime with the uh, other experiences that you've heard of? Okay, thank you, Emma. Um, um, first of all, I want to say um, how delighted I was to be invited to be part of this. Uh, I've been dragged out of my ivory tower. I'm a former history teacher and to, to meet some real teachers. I, I don't meet enough teachers nowadays. Um, so that, that's been fantastic. Um, I could talk up for a long time about this because there's been a lot said, um, but I want to just make one point about empowerment or agency and then move on to do some reflections about the, um, the, the, the themes that came up. Um, I don't like the term empowerment particularly. I prefer the term agency, but I'm going to, to stick with empowerment for now um, as something that has to be accompanied by not just um, being told you're empowered, but we have to create the conditions. And that's very clear here when we start to look at what's been happening through the inquiry process. We have to make conditions where empowerment is actually possible. And professional inquiry as a process is actually pretty good at doing that. Um, Valerie, Drew and myself have been working now for about 10 years with groups of teachers through professional inquiry and we found some of the same themes that people talked about today. Um, so, for example, um, you know, empowerment is, uh, sorry, inquiry is something that opens up curiosity. It starts with curiosity, but what it does, it provides a systematic process that takes that curiosity forward. Um, there are themes here about um, uh, the future looking aspect, the fact that we're looking to alternative futures, we're looking to do things differently, and that means imagining different futures. Uh, there are themes relating to confidence, and certainly we found that in our research, that inquiry engenders confidence. It does so by uh, bringing people together, strength in numbers. It mitigates risk in, in making what are often quite um, dangerous or edgy decisions about our practice that might be seen as quite risky. Um, it, we found in our research as well that it, it, it breaks down hierarchy. Uh, it's interesting today to see a range of teachers from across um, the whole career stages. Um, and this is what we found with our work in inquiry is if people work together across the different career stages, drawing on each other's perspectives and experiences, then we actually start to break down those hierarchies and people who are less experienced feel more confident to say, actually, I can make a difference as well. And that's about agency. And I suppose the last thing I want to say here really is, is that um, professional inquiry as a process is something that really is systematic. It opens up ideas, it opens up thinking, it brings together people and interrupts the way that we do things. And in doing so, it really does open up teacher agency. And I'll pause at that. I see the hand has gone up, so I'm out of time. Uh, thank you very much for that. Just you know, bringing a few threads together and a few things to reflect on. And certainly anybody listening in, if you have got a question that you would like us, discuss, us to discuss, please do put it in the chat. But in terms of our own discussion, we've you know had to think about this as well. Happy to hear from you. But also we had asked if uh, Mark would kick us off with, with a first question. And again, to the people who are here, the teachers who are here, if you raise your hand and Fleur, I'm sure will do an excellent job at bringing people in. So yeah, a question from you, Mark, please. Okay, I'm going to ask a double barreled question if that's all right. Um, the first part of it is, is teacher agency possible given the current constraints and level of resources that we have in Scottish schools? And if it is possible, and if we accept it's a good thing, how do we facilitate it? How do we make it possible? I see Sylvia has an answer for this and so does Emma. So Sylvia, would you like to start? Yeah, um, I definitely think it's possible um, on the basis that we all did our inquiries last year during lockdown and um, we weren't in the classroom, the kids weren't in front of us and maybe I was just fortunate to have the two classes that I was doing my inquiry with, they were 
quite engaged during lockdown, so I felt I could make I made really good progress. Um, I don't know whether because I was, you know, introducing new things, they felt they themselves felt empowered. I don't know. Um, but anyway, they they kept on turning up and they, you know, they did it. And then, you know, some of them I've got this year again. And we were doing retrieval practice. And so I've continued that in in my class now. And and you know, they're the ones who are able to say, oh, this test thing we're doing at the beginning, you know, that it's not like, you know, they're able to explain why we're doing it, which I, I find really exciting. And um, so yes, definitely, you know, you don't need huge resources, you don't need um you know, I borrowed the book that I read on on retrieval practice. <laughs> um, you know, you don't need huge resources. What you do need is a little bit of I want to do this and um, give yourself time. Um, and that's what I think is so good about the, the teacher leadership program is that that it's not um, it's not an all encompassing thing. You know, you sign up at the beginning of the year and it's a year long program, but it's very incremental. It takes you through step by step and each month's destination is, is totally manageable, um, which which I found very exciting. How do we facilitate it? You know, that that was sort of linked with my question was, you know, what was the trigger for everybody? Um, you know what made you want to start doing the 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 the, the in inquiry in the first place um and for me it was you know partly just feeling that i i wanted to do more than i was doing but i i wasn't quite sure how to do it um i knew i had it in me you know to do more and and the the teacher leadership program helped me to 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 achieve that and to sort of yeah put that sort of unrest to rest because I was able to do it and, and do something. Thank you, Sylvia. That's Emma, would you like to add to that? Yeah, I was just going to say in terms of is it possible? I would say yes, definitely it's possible. But we work in the education system. It's a large and at times feels quite a cumbersome system. In terms of how we facilitate it, I think there has to be a common understanding. I find often in education getting a little bit down the rabbit hole of what are our definitions of different words and terms and what do they mean? And the longer that we go around without having those common understandings and definitions, the further we're going to get away from any change. And then hopefully I think if there was some sort of common understanding, I, I believe there would be a desire then to follow that up and to do something about it. Um, common understandings get in the way. Um, and then just briefly to say, you know, this idea of opportunities and opportunities within education and being opened up equally and all of those sorts of ideas. I know that when it came to setting up the Teachers as Inquirers Network uh, and some people in the videos uh, referred to very supportive people around them, that we also had within the local authority, the professional learning officer, like a, a really supportive person, somebody who could open opportunities, who could open doors, who would have those conversations with you and who could think, bring fresh things to your minds and enable things to happen. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. I think um, Ms. Nivison, uh, would you like to add your views to this now? I think you're still on mute. If there is a problem hearing from Emma just now, um, I'm not sure if you are on mute or not, but if there is, and I'm conscious of time, there is a, a, a question that we've got. Are there any coming up from outside, from outside in the big world, Fleur, or will I go on with this question that I have here? Uh, there's a question from David Drysdale. Right. What do you think would be the key indicators that agency or empowerment is working well in a school or setting? I see Miss Taylor has her hand up. Would you like to start? Yeah, um, I think teachers slash staff talking about their inquiry, talking about their professional development, as it were, and wanting to share 
what's going on, both good and bad, um, what's working, what isn't, what are they going to do next? I think that's a really sa- a good, like healthy sign of inquiry working in a in a school setting, wanting to share. We have more hands and um, I know Ms. Livison, keep trying. When when we hear you, we'll we'll let you join back in. Uh, Ms. Hay, please. Um, I think that one of the key things is getting to do with kind of the staff and it's the teacher satisfaction and the teacher um, feeling like it's not an add on. I think often, unfortunately, inquiry and all this conversation professional um, development, professional learning can feel to many kind of like an add on and they've got too much on their plate already. It needs to feel like part of everything that we are doing um, and that satisfaction that it is part of it. Um, which I think at the moment, kind of kind of linking it back to the previous question with um, whether it's post- possible at the moment, I think it is difficult at the moment because everything is so busy that it's not, it doesn't feel as kind of part of the job because um, we're all kind of a bit snowed under. But that's where I think it is looks successful is when everyone is talking about it, everyone is satisfied with it and that they think it is part of their key role um, and that they are doing that on a daily basis because of that. Thank you. Um, can I invite Jenny into the conversation? Yeah, I, I think the one thing I would say is if you're in a place where there's an, ex, an acceptance that you're going to try something, but not necessarily an expectation that it's always going to be successful. I think that recognition that sometimes you try things out, you try an intervention and it doesn't always work, but there's some learning to be had from that. And I think if, if as a whole, that can also be discussed, that's a really good recognition of a school where it's working. It, uh, from the chat pane, I know Mrs. Nivison, I'm very um, so sorry that uh, it's not working out for you, but um, I'm happy to read out your comments saying that the inquiry process allows you to collect data that supports your teacher observations and this makes it more effective and makes for efficient planning, learning, teaching and assessment cycles. Thank you for contributing that. Uh, Can I bring in, oh there's no more hands up at the moment. I was going to, I'm very aware of our time and we will have to finish sharp but Susan we have a question here, and I wonder in the very short time that we're going to have for your answer, if I could possibly ask you for your views on it. Because the question which you'd thought yourself quite intriguing was that Professor Walter Humes, in a GTCS opinion piece, says that there's suspicions for some that empowerment is about devolution of responsibility and not of power. Are they mutually exclusive? Do teachers who've gone through the inquiry process feel they've had the balance of both? I'm sorry, in about one minute, Susan, could you give your views? <laughs> it's only you can only really speak from your own experience, can't you? Um, and I, when other people were talking here, I was thinking about the word trailblazer, and then I was typing in the chat there. Um, it's sometimes very lonely if you're the first person trying to do something like this in a school, and you maybe don't feel that the support network is there. But I think uh, tonight's um, session shows that it's out there. You know, you you can reach out, and there are are people there that can support you through it. And even if you're not going through the program. Um, I think that our people can be quite cynical and and this idea of an, an add on or, or extra pressure on you to to do this. You know, is this the latest that cynical view? This is the latest thing, isn't it? The, the, the trendy thing in education that everybody has to do. Um, but I think when you hear passionately from people how, about how it's changed their practice and not a tick box exercise and and you can take your time with it as well. You know, it doesn't have to be um, and you don't have to get it right. Um, Emma, I remember you always talking about how messy it is uh, all the way through. So I would hope, um, I'd like what Mark has said as well about the conditions needing to be there. And right now, I, I don't think I don't think we've got them. We're not, in my opinion, we're not there yet across the profession. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. A slightly um, disappointing final comment here that, that we're not there yet, but our time is about to come to the end. So I would just like to say thank you to everyone for joining. Uh, Sylvia's just put a comment up there as well, but thank you very much indeed for taking part. A big thank you to 
all the teacher contributors uh, who this evening, it's been fantastic for all the work you've put into it. And of course, to Mark Priestley uh, for the book as initial inspiration and also uh, for joining us here this evening as well. Yep, Fleur's just putting up, you can join him on Twitter too. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thanks everybody. <laughs>